Hi everybody, I get asked uh, frequently um, how to make sprite art, since I do <clears throat> do a little bit of that in my free time. Um, I'm by no means an expert, uh, I definitely don't do it professionally, and I'm not a big fan of the way it turns out, but I figured I would share my methods since uh, I get asked about it every now and then, and uh, hopefully someone who's infinitely more talented than me uh, can make some good looking sprites with it. So again, I'm not sure this is the best method to do it, but this is the method I've learned through the years uh, that, that works the best. So. Um, one of the first things you're going to want to learn is, or figure out, is if you want to make a standalone sprite or if you want to make a sprite that's part of like a scene, like in a game or something like that. Um, it's not a big deal if you're just making a standalone sprite for like an icon or something like that. That's really easy. You won't have to worry about this part. But if you want it to be part of a game, first thing you're going to want to figure out is sort of like your aspect ratio or just, uh, you know, the resolution of your screen. Um, let's just say for simplicity's sake that it's going to be 640 by 400. Um, I always usually like to fill with transparency. <clears throat> Don't really like the background color. Okay, so let's say this is your screen, uh, and you want your character, uh, first things for actually, first things first, you're going to want to pick the pencil tool if you're going to be making sprite art, and change the brush to pixel. Uh, the default size in the newest version of GIMP is 20, you're going to bump that down to 1. Alright, so let's say uh, this is my screen, and I want my character, whatever it is I'm drawing, to be about, let's say that big. Um, so, alright, I, I want it to be about that big, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom into that area. And I zoom in by holding control and then scrolling the mouse wheel back and forth. All right. So I'm zoomed in, and, you know, that's actually, it looks okay, but, uh, or of course it doesn't look okay as far as size goes, uh, but it looks like it might be a little bit too big. Like, you kind of lose a little bit of that uh, pixel, pixel-esque kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to change the image, scale it down. Now, you're going to want to remember 640 by 400 because you're going to want to up, uh, up it back later. You want to uh, increase it again. So let's go ahead and say about 50%. You always want this to be none, but I'll get to that later. Scale. Okay. I want my thing to be about this big. Eh, it looks a little closer to what I want it to actually be. Uh, a little more spritey, a little more, you know, pixely, uh, pixelated, if you will. So, All right, so let's do something really simple. Let's say, like, a, I don't know, like a cartoon bomb or something like that. First thing you're going to want to do is create a new layer. Uh, some people like to do the outline on the background, that's fine. I just like to create a new layer, so... Outline. Okay. Alright, so uh, let's say a cartoon bomb is just going to be a uh, circle, so... You can just freehand it, say, circle like that. <laughs> Obviously I'm terrible at making circles, so I try to go like a mathematical approach. Two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. Um, one thing uh, to note is, obviously, I'm not going to do it too much here because uh, I'm not really making any long lines. But if you ever find yourself needing to make a like a long line, you don't want to sit there and click, 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 click. Uh, if you hold down, click in one spot, and then go to the other spot that you want the line to end, and hold Shift, it'll make a line. Um, sometimes it can be kind of hard to get it to go straight like that. You'll be all kind of off kilter like that. If you want it to be straight line, you'll push and hold Shift like you would before, but also hold Control, and it'll make it snap to a straight line. Just a quick quick tip there. Okay. Two, three, four. Two, three, two, one, one, two, one, two, three. All right. Here we have our basic circle. Um, let's go and give it a little plume up here just for some place to light it. That's a little tall, but uh, just to, for the shading sake, I'm going to keep it up there. Keep it a little taller. All right. So the next layer you're going to want to pick is just your basic uh, color. So color. Alright, so um, black is what I'd usually use for something like this, but just to make sure that uh, it shows up with the shading and everything like that, I'm going to make a, let's say a blue bomb. Okay. Alright. Um, what I'm going to use is the magic wand. This little tool right here. I'm going to go to outline, make sure outline is selected. And, look at that. and you'll notice you'll start seeing a little ants marching around the inside of that outline. Now if I go to a different layer like color, there's nothing to select, so it's just selecting the whole picture. If I go to Outline, click inside the box, that's going to select that. Now, I can't color outside the box, even if I want it to. Uh, so I'm going to up the size of this real quick. Bam. All right. Put that back down to one. 
All right, select none. Let's go ahead and get our white in there. It's always sort of difficult to use pure black and pure white uh, because it kind of shows up as really, really bright, really, really, really dark. Um, looks kind of a silly wick. I don't really like the way that wick looks, but I'm not trying to make this look pretty. I just want this to look, you know, basic so I can show off the method. All right, next thing you're going to do is shading. All right, so with shading, you're going to want to use just black, pure black. Uh, but the trick is to change your opacity to what I like to use is about 40. So what I'm going to do is go around the edge of this and give it a shadow. All right, and also what I'm going to want to do is give the object itself a shadow. You don't want to forget that because especially if you're making it for like a game, you if you don't put shadows on the actual objects, they kind of end up looking like really out of place and don't look all that great. All right, so I will finish shading this and then I will continue. Okay, so we got our basic shading done. Not too too pretty, but you know, we're not trying to be. Now we're going to go shading light. So, it's a good idea to have multiple la layers or, you know, versions of shading making sprite art. So that one was 40. I'm going to set the opacity for shading light to be 20 and I'm going to start doing the same thing. Sort of start following around trying to give this bomb a little more depth. Um, you know it's still going to look like sprite art because you do have the pixels creating your shading for you. Actually I missed a spot there for the regular shading. Boop. Alright so I'm going to finish shading this in and then we will continue from there. Okay, now there's two other things that I usually like to do. It depends on what I'm trying to do. So this is a fairly clean looking bomb. I think it looks okay the way it is. Um, but you may want to put like a little nick in it or something like that. Or just little scratches on it. So, let me go details. It basically works the exact same way the shading does. You're going to want to make sure it's under those layers. I usually set it to about 60. So, oops. Let's put a little nick there. Some crack here. The crack is in, you know, a crack in the bomb, not crack is in, you know, crack cocaine. Okay. Pretty sure that went without saying. All right, so the other thing I usually don't like to do, but because uh, I'm not really very good at it, is highlights. Highlights works exactly the same way that shading does, except for you're going to use white. And you're going to want to make sure this is very, very low. I like to use 15 for highlights. The reason being is if you make highlights brighter than that, it is going to look really, really weird. Now, I like to use highlights for anything that's supposed to look shiny. Uh, some people like their bombs really shiny. So, kind of like that. And you can always adjust this, like say if I want to up it, see what it looks like, lower it, you know. You can do that with any of these layers. Alright, so, that's that. That is your basic bomb. Um, looks pretty silly, but again, I'm not trying to make it look great. All right, so what we're going to do is, now we got our bomb pretty much the size, the way it looks. You're pretty happy with that. I mean, the wick, could, the wick holder could be a little bigger, all that kind of stuff. You know, again, I'm not trying to make this perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this, the canvas size again. Let's see, scale image. Not just the canvas size, sorry. The, the, whole, the whole thing. 640, 400. Now, you're going to want this to be none. Uh, now, if it's none, it looks nice and clean. Basically, when you interpolate using cubic, I think is the standard, um, it's going to sort of round off all those edges. It thinks that you're trying to scale something that's not pixel art, so it's going to try and make it look all you know smooth and everything like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, what it looks like real quick. Yeah, it looks kind of fuzzy. doesn't look really all that good anymore. We're going to control Z that. Image, scale image, 640, 400. None. Scale. Perfect. Now we're back to our re our regular resolution, the way we liked it, the way we think our screen is going to be uh, appearing as. We've got our bomb, the size it needs to be. But now you really don't want all that extra empty space sitting around. That's kind of a waste. Um, so what you're going to do, you're going to use your crop tool, and you're going to crop it out. Now a lot of people like to crop it before the resize. That's fine. I think it's a little easier that way too. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to show you how it is right here. And enter. There we go. Now, saving it. It's going to go save as like you would anything else. The default uh, the default is the GIMP format. Bomb. Bam. 
All right, and if you want it to be a PNG, uh, before in GIMP you could just change the executable and it would say, okay, you want to save it as a PNG, no big deal. And now you actually have to go to export. So export bomb PNG. Export. And whenever you have, once it does that PNG, it's actually not going to uh, keep all your layers, so you want to keep that in mind. Now, one quick thing is if you want to uh, change the color, so you don't really like blue, you don't really like the blue all that much. Uh, this is a really simple color swap. Uh, you're able to select by color. Make sure you have the color layer selected. Click on the blue. Erase this whole thing. I'm going to bring up the size a little bit. Oh, and another important thing is anytime you're using the eraser uh, in... Um, GIMP or whenever you're making sprite art, you're going to want to make sure you have this hard edge selected. If you don't have it selected, it actually is kind of fuzzy. Let me show you real quick. See, it's kind of keeping some of the color. It's kind of making some of the semi-transparent and stuff like that. We don't want that. We want it to be a hard edge. I'm going to increase the size just so we can get rid of all at one time. All right. Let's go make this size bigger. Let's say we make a red bomb. Let's make a red bomb. All right, red bomb. Bam! There we go. Now we got a red bomb. Alright, that's pretty much the basics of what I use to uh, create sprite art. Not that exciting. Um, pretty simple, but practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the better it'll look. I obviously haven't practiced all that much, but uh, there you have it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps you out, and enjoy!